We had talked previously about with electricity, we consider the flow of electrons through conductors, and that gives us our current. Well, what are conductors? I like to think of them as roads, as highways, as alleys. Sometimes you have conductors that are great at allowing the flow of those electrons, but they may be very expensive. Gold, for example, may be a good conductor. We see silver used in a lot of the applications that we're involved with, and we see a lot of copper. When you look at motors, the copper windings, if you look at a coil on a contact or a relay, oftentimes you'll see that's copper, and that would be the conductor in the motor. These motors have copper windings in it. Perhaps some manufacturers might put aluminum windings in a motor. But those are all examples of conductors. But now, if we only have the conductor, let's say on this motor, these are referred to as leads, lead wires. If we have just copper coming out of this, on the inside of these leads, we have the conductor, copper, but on the outside, there's a material called insulation that keeps the electron from jumping off of the conductor to somewhere where we don't want it to go. If we didn't have insulation, around the conductors on this, then perhaps those electrons would jump to the side of the furnace and cause a safety issue. We might get a shock, or even more severely, we could be killed if we don't keep those electrons on the conductors rather than areas where they might like to jump. So now we put insulators around those conductors to keep the electron on the conductors. Well, if you look at this winding, can't the electrons jump off of these conductors? Well, if you were to examine the wire used in the winding of a motor, you'd find there's insulation around that individual strand of wire, around that conductor used in this stator of the motor. And so the insulation that is around that, and it comes with that on there by the manufacturer of this wire, that prevents the electrons from jumping off. But now if I have a break in the insulation, then it would allow those electrons to short against material in this motor, or to short against each other, causing a failure. So we have the conductors, which provide for easy flow of the electrons. And some of those can be a lot more expensive than others. Sometimes we don't need the most expensive material as a conductor. We don't need to use gold. A lot of times I might hear someone say, well, your contactors don't have enough silver in it. And other people may say, your contactors have too much silver in it. But when you have devices like that, the manufacturer of those devices develop the products for the application they're going to be used in. And with heating and air conditioning and refrigeration, not only do we want good conductivity, so we want to use good conductors in those materials. But we also want good life out of that. And some materials might be too soft to give us a lot of the starts and stops that we're normally looking for. So it's possible that there may be multiple conductors used in some of those contacts in order to not only give us good conductivity, but to give us good life out of that. On the insulators, 
we could see things like plastic is very common, rubber is very common as an insulator. And if we look at these particular leads, you know, there may be a motor just like this that has real thick rubbery leads. And then this one seems to have a little thinner, more of a plasticky material to it. Someone might think, well, gosh, that big, thick, rubbery material is probably better quality than what I see with the thin, plasticky material. But this thinner, plastic material may give me better performance when I see heat. It may hold up better against condensation. It may do a better job if, they're, if it's exposed to oil or vapors or something else that could corrode the rubber materials and cause the rubber to break down. So to determine the real quality of an insulator, there's information that's stamped into that insulator. Now, not only is there information about the actual insulation that's on this lead, but there's also information about the conductor. So the information that's stamped onto this tells me, first of all, this one is recognized by Underwriters Laboratory. So it's a safe product. But then it also tells me different temperature ratings, how much temperature can be exposed to, before that material were to break down. How much voltage, how much current it can withstand. So it's important to not just compare what two particular products might feel like or look like, but the stamped material gives you the very specific characteristics of those materials. Now in this case, there's nothing you had to do to make sure that these leads are appropriate for this motor because the motor manufacturer, they've designed this motor for a particular application for certain temperatures, for a certain environment. And so they made the decision what is the appropriate lead material to use with this motor. But there are times when you have to select the lead material that you use for an application. And when you do that, you have to take this information into consideration. You have to make sure that the conductor is going to be heavy enough to take the voltage and the current that it's being exposed to. It has to be able to handle the load that it's being asked to handle. We have to make sure that the insulation is going to be able to withstand the environment. If it's exposed to a lot of sunlight, could that degrade the material? You need to make certain that you're selecting the proper leads for your applications to ensure that you get the longest life possible out of that. So when we look at this, if you were to look at an extension cord, for example, it has information on there information about how many volts and amps it's able to carry, whether it's capable of being exposed to chemicals, whether it can be used in a swimming pool application where you might have chlorine that could degrade the material. So be very attuned to that and make absolutely certain that you're using the proper material on your connections. Not only the proper material on those connections, if we look at this lead, this has quick connects on it. You also want to make certain that those quick connects are in the form that they're supposed to be in. I had a call the other day and a technician said, you know, I'm working on a product and boy, it's so hard getting those leads off. So what I did is I crimped those terminals, those quick connects, and boy, it made it a lot easier to get them off of my capacitor. You don't want to do that. These quick connects are designed 
so that they give me a very secure and tight connection. And if I don't have a tight and secure connection, I get heat at that connection point. And that heat will degrade the material that I'm using. It will cause this to possibly melt and could result in a direct short in my application. So the lead materials, the connections are so important for all of the products that I'm working with. Now these leads, these would be suitable for DC, direct current, or AC, alternating current. Well, what is that? Well, when we look at those electrons, in DC, the electrons, if I were to look at a circuit on an oscilloscope, those electrons would flow essentially in a straight line. But in AC, those electrons will periodically change their direction. AC, alternating current, will show the electron as going in a northerly direction, then it changes to a southerly direction, a northerly direction and a southerly direction. So the electrons will go from a north pole to a south pole, a positive to a negative. And it does that at a very specified rate. So come back, stay with us, and learn a little bit more about basic electricity.